others with just pure conditioning. You know, there's a lot of mentors who specialize in those um, types of areas. Yes, yeah. Anthony's like a, a soccer coach, as you'd call him. And um, he, his dad was a famous football player, soccer player in um, England uh, in the 70s that played for Chelsea. And he's now, he was the manager at Colorado Rapids uh -huh. up until, I don't know, it's last season. Yeah. And then he's the under 20 uh, national coach for your soccer side. So. Wow. Yeah, you actually just brought back some memories. Um, after you, um, after yourself, actually this Saturday, I'm going to get, um, what's his name? And in, in MLS, actually a former uh, pro MLS player. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Wells Thompson. No, I'm not, I'm afraid. Okay. Yeah, so he, he was drafted um, by, I believe, uh, the Chicago yeah. The Red Bull Chicago. So uh, I should have him on this Saturday, ask him a couple of questions from, I guess, really, I just want to start off by saying just to make sure. So, um, so you got the chance to really mentor and train 15 players who actually went on to play international level, right? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot more players, 94 to a hundred players that have become professional. Okay. Um, let me just get that list. And obviously, 15 players uh -huh. um, are international players, wow. uh, nine, nine of which have played for England. So yeah. you, you would be aware of their names like the Peter, Peter Crouch, uh -huh. uh, Ledley King. The current one is um, Joe Gomez, who plays for Liverpool. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so, so I've got a... Um, it's just something that you keep... Um, you know, I started coaching many years ago and yeah. I was fortunate enough to be at the clubs wow. in London where a lot of players developed. So I'd, I'd worked at yeah. West Ham. Um, I started off at Leighton Orient wow. and um, uh, West Ham, uh, Tottenham Oxbows, yeah. uh, yeah. Charlton Athletic. And that's where Joe Gomez, um, you know, I was lucky enough to work with him. So, uh, you know, wow. you can't take... Yeah, because whenever I look at, because um, my parents are from Mexico, and whenever I see, like, the different levels from England and, and, and the Mexican League, um, you know, I'll, watch, I'll be watching a professional soccer game from the Mexican League, and I'm like, wow, these guys are, these guys got it. It's more of, like, the physical, and then I'll go and watch, like, a Barcelona game, uh, a Juventus game, I'm just like, wow, these guys are just the technical side it's just on another level and I'm like well it looks like from the Mexican side I'm watching um pretty much almost like amateurs when you watch it to to the England level you feel me <laughs> yeah I, I I think I think what you'll find is and it's the same I'm on various chats in can I in Canada and the US <clears throat> and, and, and you can see through terminology and I, I did live out in Philadelphia Mm -hmm. um, a long while ago, I went out there. Was a young twenty-five year old, yeah. And and soccer was just taking off. But what was interesting for me in the height of the fame of Diego Maradona, people didn't know who he was, and I yeah. found it amazing. And my thoughts were, <clears throat> and I remember saying it all them years ago that I think one day America would be, or the United States would be, uh, very very high up the rankings and mm -hmm. I, I've got friends who now live in the United States and they said it won't happen because of the the culture and the, the following yeah. and, and the priority being the basketball, mm -hmm. um, the hockey even um, and, and American football and, and that it will always be low down the list and I think sometimes the coaching, um, you know, particularly around the scrimmaging and, and it's the same in England that coaches my, my, my experience, I'm, I'm a coach developer as well, so I work on behalf of the Football Association, okay. and I have done, so I develop and work with coaches, hence why I met Anthony. Mm -hmm. um, even our own coaches are struggling to coach within a game, within a scrimmage. Uh -huh. They're very good at coaching the little bits, but they find mm -hmm. it hard to, to, to coach a big game. And I, and I think hearing what I'm hearing from coaches that are living in the States, and I've got many friends that are from the east coast to the west coast the male and female game as well and they're saying the same that coaches find it really difficult 
to coach within the context of the game. Yeah, yeah and, and like from, from the women's perspective, like there's a lot to be learned from watching women just as well as men. You know, it's not only like uh, I see a lot of um, and this, this used to be me as well. And I all used to just watch, you know, Barcelona, Juventus, Napoli, all those top teams. And then I'll be like, well, what can I learn from the women's side? You know, they're professionals, too. And mm -hmm. like there's are some high level skilled uh, women's players. And I'll actually like even my father comments would be like, wow, these, some of these women actually play better than some of the men's professionals, you know, I'm like, yeah, that's very I, I, I think you, you raise a good point there. And as yeah. you know, when I, when I first went out to the States in 1990, which probably mm -hmm. seems ages ago to you, looking at your age, yeah. Um, I, I, I wasn't interested in a female game and it, it was almost like, well, why are females playing football? And that was my ignorance going back. And then I went to America and then they gave me a side part of the work. They said, can you take these under 18s? who was a travel team. I don't know if that expression still exists. So they was a very good side. And then I went home, come back to home to England and said, these females, the girl game in America is so advanced. Yeah. That it's starting to change now because I've got some projects going on and I've recently been um, a, a manager stroke coach of a very famous team in London, England um, mm -hmm. over the last season. Uh, yeah. And I gave it up last year. And that was with, with Millwall Lionesses, who are a very famous club here in England. And yeah. um, admit, admittedly, they dropped down the levels, but I took it on because I was a technical director involved in the female game. Oh, wow. Um, and, excuse me, let me just turn that off. Um, and, and when I look how advanced you are mm -hmm. out there in the women's game and how you have been, then we, we are playing catch up. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, you're seeing players coming from America who are now coming to England, as you're probably aware. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, and I think that that got me onto a little project where I'm going to offer some trials here in England. Wow. And, wow. you know, tip people off uh, and possibly getting, uh, I've got a friend who runs a, uh, uh, um, in Phoenix, Arizona. He mm -hmm. works in the female game. And he said he sends players to England, uh, to Norway, Sweden, and he said, you know, if we can send them to England, and I think there's opportunities, you know, combining some educational courses, which I will do, uh, combine them with full-time football. So the game, as I understand, is far advanced in the States, but it's now starting to change. And because of the professionalism that we've now got, that, that girls and women are looking to come to England to pursue, and Europe, of course, yeah. to pursue. So there are opportunities there. Yeah, so, so I guess my, my first question then, um, really, since uh, I've been going around and asking, messaging people, getting on calls and be like, like uh, every, every coach says that the players who really make it are committed, work hard, dedicated, and, and I agree, but I feel like there's like a, there's just like that missing piece that's just missing that other players have that others don't, that's just like, accelerate their growth to a professional level and I always thought I'm just like well now and in, in everything like you have to learn how to sell and market yourself in order to at least get a, a tryout I mean now in business like the top businesses in the world know how to sell and market like how important do you think it is for a soccer player to learn how to sell and market himself so that he actually gets an opportunity to say hey you know I can actually get a shot here and and at least try out I think what you're doing is, and, and, and sorry to talk about a business, there's a lots of people that think that they're missing out. Uh -huh. And I've got a business, there's a demand for players to come to England in uh -huh. particular uh, and get in that shop window. So that's something that I'll offer next year. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, and what I'm thinking, to be fair, is you're talking about the characteristics of players. In England, they get plenty of opportunities because... Mm -hmm. At entry level, we talk about grassroots, whereas you talk about recreational levels. Yeah. Our first uh, introduction to football, soccer, um, we go and play for our local clubs. And in terms of the finances in, in, in England, it's it's not really expensive. Okay. So as I see in it now, I'm, I'm looking at people in America that are having to pay a lot of money. And it's very much a, 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 a maybe a white middle class game, if you like. Mm -hmm. Where the 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 um, 
uh, minorities don't get a chance. Well, going back to, to when I went to 1990, I thought because of the athleticism within the States and the yeah. stature, size, physicality, that's what it led me to believe that they would go on and become a leading nation. Um, and I would have said by now they would have hit that. But because I understand that from an economical point of view, mm -hmm. to play soccer is quite expensive. And there yeah. may be people from whatever backgrounds, um, you know, deprived backgrounds. Uh, and, 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 and you know what I'm talking about when we talk about the States. In yeah. particular, yeah. a lot of black guys and black people not having them opportunities. Now, I'm not saying it's the same. You know, there are going to be lots of white guys. And yeah. like you said, you'll know, you've said parents come from Mexico. I understand yeah. that, you know, there's a, a big influx of soccer players from South America. Mm -hmm. And you've got the Mexicans and you've got probably lots of Puerto Ricans that, that, that yep. come over the ball done. I'm saying is, for us, I don't think people should discriminate because football is a great way of bringing people together. But going back to our system, you start in a in a grassroots recreational level. Yeah. We have lots of scouts, and I'm currently a scout, you know, in, involved in recruitment for a professional club. Okay. And yeah. they get their opportunities to be seen. So they don't really have to market themselves. They will get... An opportunity so if they feel they are missed that's when i've now sort of set my business up to say if you feel you've been missed we'll come and look at you or you'll come to us and yeah. i'm putting things on regionally in the country commencing next year in manchester which is up in the northwest in the midlands yeah and where i'm based is just outside london in the southeast so players will get a chance to um if you like put themselves in a shop window so you will always get an opportunity so i i, I know it's very different to america and i'm yeah. presently putting something on which is really interesting and you may be able to help in my research because i've got a book here of what i'm doing with my trials next year i'm currently building a site yeah. and we've got five sort of different ventures and one is recruitment and offering um soccer tours and if you like, opportunities yeah. to come to England and receive that. So, like I said, you know, it might be different in America, but going back to the characteristics of players, mm -hmm. invariably, and you can't say this for everybody, it's yeah. a very working class um, sport. There's a hunger. Sometimes it's their best opportunity in life. And some of the players that I've worked with, you will know, Jermaine Defoe, um, Peter Crouch, you get two extremes. So you... Peter was very articulate, academic and bright, whereas without being disrespectful or rude to any soccer player or football yeah, player, yeah. they're not always the most academic. Okay. If you do work with academic lads and players, then they grasp things, you know, really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean to say that you can't be an academic genius on, on a soccer pitch yeah. like Wayne yeah. Rooney. So mm -hmm. no disrespect if you put him in a classroom, he's probably not interested, but he's a genius on the field. Yeah. Um, and you've had experience him, obviously, in, in Washington on, on the East Coast rather than on the, on the yeah. West Coast. But, yeah, I think there's lots of characteristics that make up players. Um, and they are very similar. They're very good listeners. I've never had a player that hasn't been a good listener. Mm -hmm. And they want to be taught. They want to learn. They want to be told. Whereas we have a bit of a culture now in our coaching world where we're sort of saying that players should work things out for themselves. I've always found the best players want to be told and there's an honesty uh, and, and you know the saying, good player, uh, average players just want to play, good yeah. players yeah. and very good players want to be told the truth and I think that yeah. from my yeah. experiences, players that want to go on and have gone on want to be coached, they want to be told the truth. And if that's telling them that they, they can't do this and they should do this, uh, then invariably they're, they're able to comprehend that and take that on and, and you know, are not frightened of constructive criticism, if you like. Yeah, because like um, when I look at different areas of life, like people who have been mentored, not just in soccer, but in, in business, let's say in, in the marketing department, advertising, there is always that one mentor in someone's life that they said, you know what, I like this person mentored me and he told me the, I guess you can call it the no BS truth to not what I wanted to hear, but what yeah, I absolutely man. needed to hear if I really wanted to make it. 
you feel me? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so I guess my, um, how, how, how does a soccer player really, really stand out since there's over 3 billion, uh, around two to 3 billion active soccer players? Like since you're a, a scout, if you had to pick one characteristic that you said, okay, this soccer player actually has a chance to make it in the pro scene. What is that one characteristic? I think there's many traits, but if you put it down, it is that psychological side in having that resilience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of rejection in football and soccer. I know that as a young player. Yeah. Um, so we talk about, I don't know if you talk about it in the States, the four corners, the four corner model. Yeah. So the obvious characteristics are the technical and the tactical. Yeah. So for me, you know, have they got um, technical skills? You know, are they good at running with the ball, receiving it, passing the obvious things? Mm -hmm. And then do they have a tactical understanding? Now, <clears throat> that tactical understanding isn't sort of, some people have them traits within them, but they're, they're taught and they're learnt traits. Yeah. Uh, and so that psychological side is really imperative and really important because if you cannot take instruction, and I always say, are you coachable? My non-negotiables are you need to be coachable because I've seen a lot of talented players and we have many talented technical players yeah. who do not make the grade for various reasons. And when it comes down to that psychological side of being told you must now do this, they don't take well to instruction. So I think you have to have uh, a strong mental um, capacity which yeah. can also be developed. And I think your upbringing is part of that because of how your parents, if you're, if you're brought up in an environment where we live in a world now where we're talking across the globe, yeah. <clears throat> probably yeah. six, 7,000 miles, people want instant gratification now. Yeah. They, they yeah. think they can look on the internet and become a coach. They think that, that, you know, we've got this thing in our own country now where people think they can do online courses and become a, uh, a coach and become a an expert when when it's not it's part of it yeah. so there's a mentality of well I can be what I like um, and I always say to players you have to have that ability to look inside yourself question yourself and accountability is a big word you yeah. need to be the things and decisions you make because there's a lot of temptations and there's a lot of people giving advice and I think you have to be open-minded to be able to listen to those who have experience and who have done it and who didn't make it as a, as a football player, but uh, uh, have been in the coaching world for a long time. Yeah. So coming back to, to your question, I won't lose the thread. Psychologically for me, you have to be really, really strong and resilient, but also having the characteristics of the technical and tactical and the physicality. And depending where you play your soccer, certain countries will, probably go for a bigger stronger player whereas the spanish will go for a more intelligent yeah. um sort of player who you know isn't uh 190 195 or you're american so six yeah. foot six two yeah you know you can be 165 you can be five foot five and if you play the style of play that we play mm. then we don't care because it's mainly played on the ground yeah. Um, and, it, and it's not in the air. So there are lots of different um, traits and, and, and we profile, we talk about profiling in a big way now in, in, in the FA, but for me, the psychological one, which is also part of the social. So again, I've linked it to your family. What's mm -hmm. your upbringing? What's your, yeah. um, how do you, you know, if you don't win, if you get knocked back, if you get rejected, how do you handle that? Do you throw the towel in and say, well, they don't like me. I'm discriminated against for whatever reason. I'm yeah, too small. Yeah. I'm this, I'm that. When no, no, no. It's, it's, you may not be favoured and fancied there, but you may go to another club uh, and you, you'll be the number one. So, yeah, there's a lot of rejection. Yeah. And it's very similar to the acting fraternity. You know, if you give up every time you don't get a part, then you, you're never going to get that leading role. So, it's the same in soccer, same in football. Yeah, like like I couldn't agree more. Like every single like uh, when I ask, you know, soccer coaches who have trained professionals, business coaches who have trained, you know, multimillionaires who run big, massive corporations and companies, they always mention every single time. They're always like, it's psychological, it's mental, 
it's not even about, you know, the strategies and tactics, but it's like, how much are you willing to, I guess, take in the rejection and the failure? And it comes back to, I'm not sure if you um, know who Gary V is. Uh, I'm sorry? Gary V, Gainer, Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah. Yeah. So he always oh. talks about, you know, it, you got to be comfortable with rejection and failure. He's like, you almost got to make it your best friend, pretty much. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I mean, your, up, uh, your upbringing, for sure. Like, I grew up in uh, Washington State, like at age nine or 10, my father would just take me to, to the orchards picking apples. And he would show me, you know, like, you, you got to work at it. And, you know, yeah. life isn't always going to be about winning. Like, most of the time, you're going to lose and life is, is not fair. And I, and I guess I really grasped that idea. And I was like, wow, so how can I, um, yeah, ut utilize that to, yeah. you know, create I think, more. Yeah, yeah I, th I think like you said, you used the word winning and losing. And you said your father picked fruit. Um, but also, if you have a pride, if you're going to pick fruit, be the best fruit picker. Yes, if you're gonna exactly. clean If you're going to clean toilets, if you're going to pick up the refuse, do it the best you can because... Some people will look down on other people who, yes. who come from those sort of backgrounds. And I think that we're all born the same. We all come in the world the same way. We go out the same way. And, and it's how what you do in between. I think I come from a, a, the east end of London and, and mm -hmm. it would have been at the time a deprived area. Yeah. And I hear people now talking about we don't get this. We don't get that. Yeah. Well, yeah. we've come from that. I've come from that. If you've come from your dad was an immigrant in terms of coming from 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 did you say mexico no my father was actually from el salvador my mother oh, so, oh, yeah sorry I, I, the so so you can sit back in life and say i haven't been given this yeah but you have to look at what you have got and coming back to yes. the winning and losing thing is it's the same with the edison thing you've heard it a million times and it's uh you failed twenty thousand times no i didn't fail i didn't find the way and I think if you look at life and say um, it's not about failing, it's learning that that way didn't work. And if you haven't got that psychological uh, ability to override rejection, if you want to call it failure and not finding a solution, yeah. you know, you're never going to get anywhere. And I think that resilience is a really important um, aspect and that psychology and psychological. And if you've got parents that are telling you that, Whereas yeah. if you come from a, a background where, oh, it doesn't happen to us some, it doesn't happen to our sort of people. Mm -hmm. And I say to young players, why not you? Someone's going to play for England. Someone's going to play yeah. for Manchester United. Why not you? And the only person that's going to stop yourself doing it is yourself. So you exactly. need to you need to work hard. And I'm also um, a realist as well to say that not everybody can get to the top. But for me, success is not just about it's it's being able to keep going uh, and, and success to different people is not just playing at the top. It could be playing at a lower level in yeah. terms of football or not having the top job, but having a good job where you're happy with what mm -hmm. you do. You provide for yourself. And again, you've got that um, word I think is really important and it's accountability. Yeah. You have to be accountable for your own actions and the decisions you make are a really important part of your education for me. Yeah, so I, I guess now let, let's move on to accountability because um, whenever, uh, I guess it just comes from a perspective of, of self-awareness, you could say, like whenever I have someone to keep me accountable for anything, uh, usually I'll find someone that isn't, you know, my best friend or someone that I trust because a best friend is going to tell you, at least from my experience, you know, it's going to be all right, you know, it's going to take it easy. And sometimes you just need that, that punch in the mouth, you know, that's going to tell you, hey, you need to keep going, you know, you need to get up. And sometimes, for me, that was always my father, like when I was playing uh, uh, soccer, he would never usually watch me. And I would always ask my dad, and he would just tell me the truth. And I, I thought it, it was painful back then as a seven year old, but I'm just like, wow, I really needed that is whenever I would play a soccer match, Instead of telling him, hey, son, you did good, he would just tell me, like, man, you sucked. You know, yeah. you, you didn't play good. And I was like, wow. And that well, would well, push me to keep improving. <laughs> yeah, I think you've got two sorts of parents. I don't yeah. see many in between. My my father, who's still alive, and, and my mother is as well, um, 
you know, late seventies and early eighties. And he was my biggest critic. He had a business. He come from a, from a, both of my parents come from one parent families because of different circumstances. So you either feel sorry for yourself or you say, we're going to overcome yeah. the hands you've been dealt with. So, so I was fortunate enough. Uh, I've got a brother who's a very successful business person as well. And um, I think the parents that sort of uh, drive you on and, and tell you the truth, because my yeah. father and my dad was my biggest critic when I played. Yeah. And he would say to me, son, you're only small. And if you're small, you've got to be twice as good as everybody else. So there yeah. was that mentality of, and he told me as it was, and I'd say I had a good game. He said, no, you gave it away too many times. You did this and that. Whereas you get the other parent that says, my son, my daughter, they're fantastic. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and, and I'm fortunate now that I look back and think I was driven on because, you know, you need to be able to take that criticism. And again, it's back to the accountability mm -hmm. and not blaming others for your failures and being able to say, well, maybe I need to do something different. And again, that goes back. That's linked to the social side and the psychological side of the things you inherit from your parents in your genes. Yeah. And I think that you need parental to support as well. Like you said, it's really important when you said you get knocked down and, and, and they'll pick you up. Yeah. And vice versa, where you get too carried away and they'll bring you down. So it's that yeah. manual situation. I think that's really important. Yeah, sometimes there's that, um, the you can call it the tough love where you need it. Where yes. There's the tough love and then there's also the flip side where there are times when you do need it but not too much it's i call it the the comfortable love the warm comforting love when it's like yeah it's like an emotional hug where they're like take it easy you know it's all right and then someone else just tells you no man it's not going to be all right because if it was all right where you are then you wouldn't make it you know and then yeah. you're just like wow that that breakthrough so i guess my favorite topic now before um and I've asked you really the, the questions that I wanted to ask you here, but back to mental resiliency, fortitude, um, just having that, I guess, uh, resiliency and obsessiveness. How does a soccer player or one develop that? Like, is there a, a way where someone can actually kind of improve their way or it just happens with, you know, experiencing rejection? I think I think you're born with certain traits, but they can be developed, obviously, because you talk about nature and nurture. Yeah. Some things are inherent; they're they're within you. And um, you know, you take for example, some people lose a game of chess and darts, and they want to throw the ball all over. Yeah. I'm not saying that's a good example, but they have a natural winning instinct. Yeah. And I think that you know sometimes your parents when you're developing as a young player, you need to understand there's lots of things to development. And it's not just about winning. It's looking at the performance as opposed to, you know, the long-term objective. So I think we have coaches in this country that are yep. talking about, we've got an 80% win record, man, you know, and they're nine years old and you're like, okay, winning's important or wanting to want to win yeah, is a good is. mental thing. However, mm. it mustn't, uh, overshadow the bigger picture of development. Mm -hmm. Coming back to what you actually stated, I think you can learn to become more resilient, but okay. you need someone to point that out to you and support you, pick you down uh, or pick you up when you're down and knock you down when you're up because um, it's that syndrome of you're a good player in your own environment. And I can re recall it then going into a new environment from being the best player into just an average player and then mixing with the elite. And it's, mm. do I throw the towel in or do I have some things? And it's not just about your talent. It's, it's the mental state that can take you further. So some people will be born blessed into yeah. a family. If you take it outside soccer, they'll have a, a, um, a lovely home, good family, but they haven't got no desire to work. Um, yeah. uh, 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 because they've got nothing to prove. The family have looked after them, and that's nice. Yeah. But you yeah. might get someone who's come from that other background who's got a passion and desire, yeah. and they can overcome certain things because of their – there's a hunger. 
And I think you always need to have that hunger. And yeah. some people get to a certain level or state of comfortable or com you know, uh, and don't have that desire. And I think that you can learn to just be the best you can. And I always say, if you give 100%, um, and this is a little tool that I use in coaching for young players. Okay. I'll come off and I'll say to them, and you might try this, you might, you, you probably know if, you, if, you, if you're a, an academic or you've studied and, I always say to them, guys, in you come. And depending on what age you're coaching, so I still coach young players, I'll say to them, how do you feel you've done today? Give yourself a mark out of 10. And I say, based on your performance. And some will say six, seven, eight. They'll give various marks. Mm -hmm. I say, okay, so we can all improve. And then I say to them, now give yourself a mark out of 10 for the effort and commitment that you give. Mm. And some will say seven, eight, nine, and I'll say, right, every single one of you then who have not said 10 has failed. Because mm -hmm. if I give 100% in every training session, everything I do, if I'm not good enough, I haven't failed. If I give 100%, I've done my best. And you can do no more. And you can give no more. But if you win the race... And I have players that are really good because of their physicality and their strength, mm. but they're not pushing themselves. Mm. And I liken it to them. I'm saying is, you didn't give 100%. There's still more in the tank. Mm -hmm. When you come up against other people that are as good as you, if not better, if you're not able to push yourself, if you're not able to give that extra bit, because in you don't have to at the moment, because doing what you're doing is enough to win or come first. But when you move into that next level, and you get with the elite, or then the elite of the elite, mm. if you don't know how to push yourself on, then you're never going to be able to, 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 you know, take yourself and be the best of the best. And I think mm. to be the best of the best is really special mindset that, that many people, you know, will aspire to, but haven't got that within their locker, so to speak. Yeah, so... Just, learn, just I think you are able to learn it, and there's... There's certain books, sorry to cut across you, there's certain yeah. books that you can look at mm -hmm. around the mindset, uh, uh, and you're probably aware of certain books. I don't, not, I'm not too, uh, I haven't read too many books, but the Bounce book is a very good uh, book. I don't know if you're aware of that. Okay. Uh, and there's, there's certain um, books that you look at. The Chimp, um, you know, certain ways that, you can't change other people, but you can change yourself. And I think it's yeah. really important that you're able to develop your, you know, your inner self and your psychological traits, for sure. Yeah, I, I can't remember who now when you said you can't change yourself, uh, you can't change others but yourself. I think that there's, a, I, I think most people neglect, and it used to be me back when I was 15 or 16 years old. Now, now I'm 20, but... Like I, I didn't know, I wasn't, you know, fully aware that I needed to change in order to grow, which was that imagine like the, the biggest prison that you can be in is a prison that you don't know you're in. Yeah. Right. So I didn't know I was in that prison myself. Like, oh, I'm good. I, I got everything. But and then until I got a breakthrough and I was like, wow, man, uh, like I haven't done anything. You know, I was like, I haven't done anything. And so that, that brings me back. So back to the winning, to being the best of the best. It's almost a balance of like, uh, and I confuse this too. Like sometimes I'll win and I'll be like, I gave it my all just because I won. And I'll confuse it with, I gave it my all because I won. But yes. in reality, yeah. you could have given like 10% of your effort and yeah. nothing, you know? I, I, I think you did wrong. And a good analogy I always use is the gym. The gym. Every young boy has tried the gym. Some people are willing to cheat. <clears throat> if you look at it, you've got, you're given certain genetics. So mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, your makeup, mesomorph, endomorph. And I'm saying is, I was one of them that if I wanted to, I needed to put on a few pounds. Yeah. So once you go into the gym, you see people go to the gym and then you've got the cheat that will stick some tablets down their neck or inject yeah. themselves. <laughs> yeah. And they look great. And then you've got that in-between person that realizes they you know they do a bit of weight so they get stronger great and then you've got that hard gainer yeah and he has to eat and drink and uh work harder than everyone else and i'm saying is we all have different traits 
And if you go to the gym, I think it's the best thing because for me, it, it, it's a life lesson of, well, it's not happening. Do I throw the towel in? Well, if you want it that bad and you always want to be that skinny, um, 110 pound, five foot 10 guy, then <laughs> you know what I mean? But you've got to do something about it or is that the life you was destined to be? So yeah. I think someone who's been through that and, and, and life's the same. It's, you know, sometimes you dealt a good hand. Sometimes I see people have dealt a terrible hand and, 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 I, and, I, and I do feel sorry for them. Uh, and some people may say that to me on certain things, but I, I don't pity um, many people, but I think it's really good to be able to look at yourself and say, I'm in this situation, it's not the best, but I'm going to come out of it on top. I might not look or get where I want to be, but I'm going to give it all I can so I can look back and say, do you know what? It wasn't through the lack of trying. Mm. It wasn't through the lack of e effort or commitment. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be accountable for myself. I'm not going to blame others and say, Oh, my mum and dad weren't big, so therefore, you know, it's their fault. Well, yeah. how bad do you want it? And it's the same with work. It's the same with soccer and athlete, mm -hmm. athletics, basketball. It's the same with life. It's a life It's a life lesson that we all have to go through. And like you're saying, you're 20. If I had my time again, yeah, maybe I would have do, done things differently. But that's part of getting older, that you, you, you know that there's no shortcuts. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, it's, we've all got different problems that we have to overcome. Mm -hmm. And, you know, do we really want to do it? So, so would you say the gym is one of the best places? I mean, uh, since I've been going to working out lifting since I was 18, two years now, I just started. So, but either way, would you say that's the best place to start developing mental fortitude and start developing that mental toughness? Um, I think other people have mental toughness put on them from an early age. You mm -hmm. know, you, you you sound a well-rounded guy. Yeah. It sounds like your dad's had the harder life and he's, he's, he tried to make that easier for you and you probably appreciate that. Yeah. And, and it's the same in my parents. Um, so I think some people have dealt a hand in life where straight away they're the underdog, whether it's through race, religion, colour, <clears throat> um, in terms of finances, you know, economically, if yeah. you've had them hardships on you, then there might be growing up with a with a, a chip uh, on your shoulder, a, an underdog sort of, you know, life's thrown this at me. And, and I get that. Yeah. And I think so. So we all have different crosses to bear, if you like. But mm -hmm. I think some people will encounter that through different circumstances. Mm -hmm. And it's, again, the big, best advice I've come from that and you have to not feel sorry for yourself. You can't blame um, your failings on others. Yeah. Um, you have to you have to overcome them. So in answer to your question, again, I think the gym is a real good um, equaliser um, because you can achieve it. Mm -hmm. But some people just have to work a lot of others. And if I turn it round, mm -hmm. I hated it when I was younger, being light, skinny, all them words. But when you get older... If you've had a fast metabolism and you get to my age and then you look at guys who are half your age and you go, look how out of shape they are. So maybe I was gifted at, and didn't realise it mm -hmm. at the time. And that might have helped in, in later life. So I think there's lots of different things that you can um, equate to, to, to soccer mm -hmm. uh, 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 and not having advantages and disadvantages. But at the end of the day, We've all got 24 hours in a day. Mm -hmm. It's how you utilize those hours to get where you want to be. And I think that's a massive thing I've learned in life wow. now. Them 24 hours. What, what, we all have the same time. And as someone once said, it's all right being busy, but are you productive? And they're two different things. You need to be productive and not just busy. Yeah, because because you can be busy being busy, right? <laughs> busy doing nothing, yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, and, and last question here um, for yourself, since what piece of advice do you have for an older player? Let's say their goal is still to be a professional soccer player. Let's say they're 21 years old. What, what, are, you, what are you telling them if they're, if, if they're starting to lose hope and faith that it isn't going to happen? Right, this is a good one. This is a business opportunity now. This is where I'm learning. To come to me next year, Yeah. now residential camps, that's that's you know you, you look out for that business but those seriously 
is <clears throat> not to lose faith. There are players that have not got into the game and whatever level you play at, whether it's professional level, whether that's an international level, is, is yeah, yeah. keep having faith um, and, and, and believe in yourself and well. you will find your level. And whether that level is the level that you want to play at, uh, same as me, I've got that first-hand experience. That, that's all I wanted to do. That's all I wanted to be was a professional player. Mm -hmm. And whilst I spent a combined total of eight years at professional clubs as a junior and youth team player, I never made it as a professional. Yeah. So the next best thing was going there. So I've been there. It, 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 it meant a lot, mentally, psychologically done my head in. I felt yeah. at a stage where I wanted to jump under a train. Um, and I say that it was a long time ago. It's mm -hmm. because all I wanted to do was to be that soccer player, that professional football mm -hmm. player. It wasn't my vacation. I think it comes a time in life where you you, you, you realise that. Um, but like I said, don't give the dream up. Continue working hard. And if you give it all you've got, then you haven't failed. You yeah. just haven't, you know, you just haven't got to play at that level. But the best, best bit of advice I give, don't stop playing. Don't stop playing because you get to a certain age and you can't play. Your body doesn't allow you to play. Yeah. So people said it to me and I stopped playing too early, but I think it was because personally I went into coaching. So that was my pathway and my career. Yeah. And then into educating other coaches. So um, never stop playing because there'll be a day where you can't play. And, and, and I think that's yeah. the best bit of advice I would give to youngsters of all ages. Well, I appreciate it, uh, Colin. It was great connecting with you. Um, wishing you the best in your, your soccer journey as a coach. I mean, there's a lot of talent out there that uh, really has what it takes to be a professional. They have that fortitude and everything. It's just that, I guess, not being seen, but once they, they're seen, then they'll absolutely uh, make it to the top. I want to appreciate uh Thanks for taking the time, man. Appreciate well, it. Well, Alexander, look, last thing I'll just say what you just said is well, you have to have that selfishness. Yeah. And there's a lot of um when I say selfish, not in a not in a selfish, selfish way. That sounds hypocritical. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things that you have to forsake. There's a lot of things you go without to to make it to the top. And I've seen players in our country, people start going out socializing, drinking. Yeah. And there's a lot of sacrifices to be made. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure your father can talk to you about the sacrifices he made to, to, to bring you up and, and to do what he did. So, you yeah. know, I, that's another bit of advice I say. It's it's a hard journey to the top. Yeah. And and, and only a few are going to get there because, you know, it's hard work. Um, and sacrifice is a big part of that. Yeah, for sure. Now, now you, you brought up uh, my father again. Yeah, the, certainly he, he did go through a lot of sacrifices. I mean, uh, when he was 17, he came to the U.S., um, literally did not take a day. The very next day after he, he came to the U.S., literally started working in the orchards. Um, so, yeah, there's a, my mother, the same thing. She came to the U.S. with um, my eight aunts and uncles. So there's a lot of sacrifices being made. Uh, from my family members, but yeah, I, I certainly am starting to get to understand the selfish. So correct me if I'm right here, just so I, I grasp grasp this idea. Selfish in a way as saying no more often to the things that are not going to benefit you. Learning that's how to say no. Exactly right. So whether that's drugs, whether it's uh, drugs, social drugs to get higher, whether it's drugs in the gym to to yep. cheat, uh, you know. It's being able to say no and being strong minded again. It's that psychological thing because yeah. you know what you're doing is right. And it's a bit like the gym. You go to the gym because you need to beef up and you look in the mirror the next day and it doesn't work. If you keep yeah. doing the right things over a period of time, you will become lucky. You will start yeah. to get things happen because of, you know, if you know what you're doing is right, keep doing it. And I know you've got the other saying. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got yeah. in terms of, you know what I'm saying, and that's mm -hmm. been said in different ways as well. But if you know what you're doing is right, the results will come in the end, and they don't happen overnight. Yeah. And this is where the internet is a failing for me because people read it 
and all of a sudden they're experts. And yeah. there's one thing you can't buy, and I've always said it. You can't go into the local Acme or shop that you have or, or to uh, – uh, what, what shops did I used to have when I go shopping out in, in the States? I'm trying to think now. In, in England, we have Tesco, Sainsbury's. I know you've got Tesco now in, in the States. Uh -huh. you, you cannot go into a supermarket, and wherever you look, you can't buy tins of experience. Yes. They don't exist. <laughs> The internet makes people self-confessed experts. Yeah. You need to get out on the association. So I can't tell any lies and I find it very difficult. Another thing from my parents I've inherited, yeah. Um, yeah. tell the truth because you get found out. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's the only way to, to, to live. So uh, and as my parents say, and your parents probably do, if you're honest, yeah. you can go to bed and sleep at night. And, and if you can sleep, then you've got a good, you know, yeah, you got a good thing. For sure. Well, I appreciate it, Colin. Thank you for uh, your time. We'll for sure keep in touch. Um, I think these questions are really going to benefit not only me. I mean, for, forget about me, but other players who need it. Uh, I know um, my father actually has a friend who has two soccer players. And I mean, his father is just investing a ton of money into their children to play soccer. But I, I feel like this, uh, these questions that I've asked you can actually help these players and their parents to make it. Because I certainly feel like there, there's a lot of players who have it, but they just need that, just that assistance, hearing it from someone who's actually been there and coached as well. So I appreciate it. Alexander, you. last thing. Is yours, is yours a project for a, an educational thing or is it a personal, uh, whether it's a business or not, it doesn't matter to me. It, yeah. it, it's What's your angle on this if you don't mind yeah, asking, so your research. Really getting awareness i mean really uh right now i'm in the business of brick and mortar business with my father doing construction doing some marketing copywriting for other businesses yeah. but really i feel like my touch and i haven't discovered it yet has to be in in the soccer area and the soccer niche because back when i was 18 um i was actually training to and, and you don't know this i i rarely tell these to a lot of people but i was training to join the varsity soccer team for my high school and yeah. i was putting in a ton of hours i mean i calculated everything worked like four or five times it worked out four or five times a day but uh my my leg just i experienced the injury for the first time you know my meniscus got torn my acl my lcl everything yeah. and it, it was just worse than a broken leg and the doctor told me if, if you injure your knee, there's a high probability that you might have to lose your leg. And I'm like, well, oh crap. Yeah, that's a big issue there. So definitely. And I, yeah. And I feel like people need to hear your story or what it is that you went through in order to be inspired and just keep moving. It doesn't even have to be soccer players. It could just be a kid who is struggling in the hood, you know? Yeah, but, definitely. Yeah, for sure. And, 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 and that success is sometimes keeping people out of prison yep. um that's success to some people you know because you get pathways like you said you get crossroads in your life and it's about making the right decisions and we're seeing a lot of turmoil in the states at the moment and and, yep. and, and even in england and and there's far more important things than soccer and football and football's a really good tool soccer's a really good tool for educating people around decisions mm -hmm. it's a great tool for bringing different colors, countries, uh, religions together, because it's, 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 it, it's a marvelous thing. And like I said, be very interesting to see your, 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 your um, where you put your stuff. I'd love to see your um, uh, study. If, if you put something out there, buy